So I've got the solar plane V3 uh, out here at the original flying field. And the flight plan today is just to take off and keep it in the air as long as possible. So we're at the 56 minute and 11 second mark and we've used 2830 milliamp hours and this is a 2700 milliamp hour 5 cell battery so that goes to show the solar cells are definitely doing something because we've used more power than we have on board. We've been flying for 56 minutes and the battery is only at 19.8 volts so that's pretty good which is great for the sake of this project but on the other hand it's not all that exciting sitting here and steering this hockey puck around the sky. Pretty uneventful. So if you saw the last video I made about this solar plane, um, I basically just flew back and forth in a, a pattern at cruise throttle, which is the amount of throttle that it needs to maintain altitude. And I tried to determine whether or not uh, the battery voltage was dropping, staying the same, or rising to determine if it would be able to sustain flight using only solar power. Um, and the conclusion from that video was no, it would not be able to sustain flight. And right now, the battery voltage has dropped from like 20.2 to 19.8. So that also says no, this plane would not be able to sustain flight. Um, but we'll see as the battery voltage drops, the voltage difference between the solar cells and the battery might become more efficient and therefore uh, cause the solar cells to give power to the battery and the motor more efficiently or give more power rather and uh, then it could be able to sustain flight so we'll just keep flying so we're at one hour eight minutes and 18 seconds and it's time for a snack. Need to steer the plane back on course first. It has a, I have 2D hold, which is like gyro stabilization, and, uh, or 2D stabilization with hold, which means uh, heading hold. But I need to figure out which setting to adjust on the vector, because um, for both return to home and for heading hold, it kind of likes to do S turns especially for return to home. It does wild S turns when it's trying to circle overhead. So I don't think it's the gyro gain that I need to adjust. I think it's the, the turn strength. I had it at like 50% or whatever units it was before. And then before this flight, I turned it down to like 20 or 25, I think. And uh, it doesn't seem to help all that much. So I need to figure out what's going on there. So we're at uh, 1 hour 16 minutes and 52 seconds and I definitely think there's some thermal activity um, affecting the plane because, not right now, now we're descending, but I've been at like 1.5 or 1.6 amps for a while, which uh, should be a descending rate, um, but a few minutes ago or a few seconds ago or whatever I was uh, climbing even though the throttle was low, so I think that goes to show that there's definitely some uh, thermals pushing me up. And I don't want that because I'm trying to figure out the flight time based only on solar power. But I'm not like trying to stay in the thermals or anything. I'm just flying in straight lines. So there's not really all that much I can do about it. So I've had the motor off for a while. I've just been flying line of sight. And... For how long the motor's been off, it hasn't started descending until just recently. So it was definitely getting some thermal activity. Wow. And uh, since I've had the motor off, the battery is charged back up to 20.42 volts. So I'll turn the motor back on and we'll see if that was kind of like a temporary voltage boost or if the battery actually maintains 20 volts again. Okay, throttling up. 
We're at three amps and the battery is maintaining 20.25 volts. So that's more or less what we started at. It kind of seems like the problem is that my motor pulls too much power from the solar cells and because of that the, the solar voltage drops and makes them give less power. As to where when I turn off my motor the battery draws, to charge the battery it draws just enough power um, as to where the solar cells are more efficient in giving that power so that they can give more power. So it's if I, if I cruise with my throttle on then the solar cells aren't going to give that much power but if I glide they'll charge the battery up real fast. That's kind of what it seems like. And let's see it's now noon so the sun should be pretty much directly overhead more or less. Well now I'm descending a little bit even though I'm pulling three amps so I guess there's thermals and there's also sink so hopefully those kind of balance out and I'm not getting more lift than I'm losing. See what I really need is the ability to have two current sensors one for solar and one for battery so I can see how much power the battery is giving. Actually I need three. I need one for the motor so I can monitor my throttle because I like to look at the amp draw and uh, set my throttle to pull like three amps which is about cruise throttle or more for a climb or less for a descend. So I need one to monitor my throttle, I need one to monitor how much power is coming out of the battery and then I need, I need another to monitor how much power is coming out of the solar cells. That would be ideal. Look at this. Like, really? So we are starting to get some cloud cover coming in and that might affect our flight plan. So I've gained some altitude and what I'll do now is try and stay higher and just try and avoid the cloud shadows. But it looks like the plane's in a cloud shadow right now. The wind also just kind of started to pick up. Um, it's about 12.45. So I was just in, uh, I think I'm just exiting this huge thermal that uh, lifted me way up high because I was at about 3 amps which is cruise throttle and I gained like a thousand feet of altitude. I think that thermal was the one caused by this cloud. You can see the shadow right now. So it's getting kind of windy here. And I'm like pretty far away out that way, so I'm a little bit concerned that I'm going to have a tough time making it back uh, with a headwind. But it also kind of seems like the wind is shifting, so it could just be thermal cycles rolling through. So maybe I shouldn't be too concerned about that. Um, it's 2 hours, 9 minutes, and 34 seconds. And about 2 minutes ago, I hit a huge pocket of sink. And I was just descending like so fast. I don't know exactly what it was, but I was descending really fast. I was actually kind of happy about that because I was higher than I needed to be and my radio signal was starting to get bad because I only have a omnidirectional antenna on my receiver goggles here. So now I'm just coming back home. So we're at 2 hours, 23 minutes, and 42 seconds. And that big thermal cycle or windy period just passed. Um, and now it's calm again. So that was a little bit hectic for a sec because I was farther out and higher than I wanted to be. But So for the past 10 minutes, I've just been maintaining 3 amps of throttle and the battery voltage has stayed at 19.3. Um, so I think that goes to show that at noon with the sun directly overhead, this plane is capable of sustained flight. Um, now I guess that arises the question, well good, what now? And uh, I don't know because like my goal, like sustained flight at noon is great. Um, that's a good goal to hit, but that's not really what I'm after here. What I want is to be able to gain altitude on purely solar power um, and start at like 10 in the morning and be able to start climbing and not using any battery. That's kind of my goal here. So I think I'm going to uh, either need to start experimenting with MPPT charge controllers or um, 
redesign the plane. So I think the first step is definitely to keep using this plane and uh, experiment with the MPPT charge controller I have. And then if that one doesn't work, switch to a, a different one. Because right now I have a, a Genesun GV10. It's a 10 amp boost controller, meaning it uh, boosts the voltage of the solar panel up to the voltage of a four cell battery. It's made for four cell batteries. Um, and that could be a problem because I'm using a five cell on this plane right now and it just kind of barely has enough power. So if I have to go down to a four cell, I might really not have enough power. Um, but so that charge controller has a boost converter in it. Um, and this, these panels are putting out like 23.5 volts. So I don't need that boost converter. So I need to figure out if that charge controller will work, which it very well might not, or if I'm gonna need to get a new one that's a step down charge controller where it takes that 23 volts from the panels and uh, steps it down to, you know, like 20 volts for a five cell or, or something like that. So I need to figure out my uh, charge controller situation. But other than that, let's see, I'm still at three amps and now it's at 19.24. Um, so maybe it's gone down a little bit, but I'm still kind of climbing here, so that's good. That's a good sign out. Now we're kind of back up to 19.3 again. So yeah, I would call this sustained flight for sure. So we're at two hours, 44 minutes and 33 seconds. And the wind has picked up quite a bit. Um, on the ground here at least. So I've been facing west for most of the time now, just trying to fight this wind. And as a result, I've had to uh, keep my throttle up around five amps, so the battery voltage has definitely dropped quite a bit. Now we're at 18.8 volts um, and dropping. So it's the lowest I've been yet, mainly because of this, uh, because of this headwind. So maybe I'll climb, I'll use what battery I have left to climb up higher and see if I can kind of get out of this turbulent, sinky, fast moving air that I'm in right now. I don't know if this is just like a thermal cycle and it's just uh, air rushing over to a low pressure and it's kind of localized or if it's like wind that could be coming over and down the mountains that are ahead of me. If that's the case, there could be some rotor or like sink patches, um, sink bands kind of along here. Um, I'm not really sure, so I'll just try and gain some altitude and get up out of whatever it is. I've just been kind of hovering into the wind at about 3.5 amps and the voltage has been really stable. It's just kind of sitting around 18.8. So the flight time is 3 hours, 28 minutes, and 55 seconds, and I'm in another big thermal, unfortunately, but I guess that's sort of fine because I feel like I've been in sync when I've been lower to the ground. So anyways, I gained a ton of altitude. Now I'm just trying to get out of this thermal and glide down lower. The voltage is climbing, of course, because I'm not using any power in the glide. So I feel like this big thermal that I'm in, or that I was in at least, has just kind of been, oh wow, okay. It's uh, pretty turbulent up there, it looks like. Anyways, I feel like it's kind of been just uh, too much help, so I'm gonna switch off the solar cells while I'm gliding down so that they're not helping out at all, so that they're not charging the battery back up. Um, so I just switched them off, solar cells are disconnected, and now I'm just gonna glide. So I'm gliding in and I'm getting closer so I'm going to switch the solar cells back on and then raise my throttle a little bit so that I can maintain this altitude.
So I landed at about 4 hours and 12 minutes. Um, I'm kind of relieved to have the voltage finally go down and finally have to land because four hours of sitting under that tree and moving a stick around um, kind of got old after a while, <laughs> to say the least. For the sake of this video, this is kind of the moment of truth here to open up this little shell and see if uh, the onboard SD recorder is still going after four hours. Oh, wow, it is. Nice. That's pretty impressive. I've got a 32 gig SD card in there. So all in all, that was a good test flight. Uh, it was successful. I'd say the reason that I had to land or the reason the plane could no longer sustain flight was that it got too uh, turbulent and windy and the plane just needed, it took more power to stay aloft. So that's what really did it. But I'd say the time span between probably 11.30 and noon, or maybe 11.30 and 12.30, um, in between that amount of time, it was not very windy. Um, and the sun was directly overhead and the solar cells seemed to be generating enough power to sustain flight. Um, now just barely, but I do think that if those conditions were to persist throughout the day, um, which is obviously impossible, uh, but if that what if that happened, then it would be able to sustain flight. And it did there for a little while. I mean, that was like a four plus hour flight. So it some something's working obviously, but, um, my goal here is not to fly all day because that's boring. Um, my goal is to have a plane that can basically generate enough power for it to fly completely um, on solar power at any time of day. And by any time of day, I mean ranging from like 10 a.m. to, you know, 3 p.m. Not, not unreasonable, but so anyways, um, that was a good test, but the goal has still not been met. And I also think that with how much power these cells should be able to generate, it's not efficiently utilizing that power. So still need to work out the power system, still have work to do, but all in all, that was the longest solar plane flight so far and the, probably the most successful test so far. So anyways, if you'd like to support this project, um, there's a Patreon link in the description, but that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Bye.